thanks a lot to the Hello Tomorrow for having um, myself, Augustine Marty, and Diplomatic here today. Um, actually, it's, it's really amazing because um, such a talk wouldn't be possible a few years ago. Actually, in the field of computer vision, we have witnessed incredible progress in, in, the, in the recent years, and, and, and this is mainly due to, of course, deep learning. Especially in the field of computer vision, everything changed with deep learning. Because you don't need anymore to be a mathematician or a physics PhD if you want to solve machine learning problem related to images. Actually, you have those deep learning models, and if you want to train them to make your algorithm, and to make an algorithm that is able to recognize images, the only thing that you need to do is to feed your model with examples. So if you want your algorithm to differentiate Vladimir Putin from François Hollande, you just give to your deep learning model hundreds of images of François Hollande, hundreds of images of Vladimir Putin, and at the end, your algorithm will be able to differentiate the two. ImageNet is um, an iconic challenge in the world of computer vision. In, in this challenge, there are 100,000 categories. They represent different objects. For instance, leopard and panthers. There are two different categories. And it's a kind of battle of algorithm, and the algorithm has to put the right, all the images in the right categories without doing mistakes. And thanks to deep learning and thanks to the democratization of, um, of image recognition, the error rate dropped in five years from 26% to a little bit less than 5%. And 5% is the typical error rate of a human, <clears throat> of someone uh, human. So basically, in the field of computer vision, this year, in 2015, we achieved something that is comparable to the computer beating the Go champion from Korea. And um, actually, this also was made possible by the tech giants that start, starting invested massively in, in the deep learning, in bigger and bigger models that have now millions and millions and millions of parameters to be set up during the training. And because this is a very heavy process, you need to have a lot of computing powers. Here, you have uh, Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, offering Elon Musk a supercomputer. What is interesting in this, in, this in this picture, it is that, as you can see, this supercomputer is quite small. It is just an alignment of GPUs, um, in, in, in a box, and they can process calcul at an amazing, uh, amazingly fast. So those kind of hardware are now um, affordable, especially because they are in the cloud. With all that technologies, and with all that computing power, we have seen recently very impressive application in image recognition. For instance, this is Google Show and Tell. So Google uh, will describe some pictures. And what we can see in this image captioning, it is that Google can use a rich vocabulary with verbs and adjectives, like um, a large brown dog next to a small one looking out of a window. And if you step back, and if you realize that it's a machine that is describing the scene, it's something that is really impressive. Another example is um, style transfer. Deep learning algorithm can perfectly understand the style of some paintings. And then, once they have learned to reproduce the style of such a Van Gogh expressionist um, painting, if you give to the algorithm a picture of houses, it will turn the picture into a kind of Van Gogh painting. And if you are a novice, it's almost something that you can't differentiate from a real Van Gogh for a novice. Another one, another application, which is up to me very, very impressive, is um, video coloration. OK, on the, on the left, you have a black and white video. 
And this is an artificial intelligence which colors the video and turns the black and white video into a colored video. How did the scientists, how did the engineers do to make such a performance? They simply took thousands of, um, thousands of colored videos, they turned it black and white, then they, they, um, they had the deep learning algorithm study the correlation between the black and white video and the colored video, and then once it is trained with a new black and white video that the algorithm has never seen, it's possible to make a, an almost perfect colored video. All those applications look really amazing. And, and actually, it's extremely promising for the science of image recognition. But here, I want to talk about specific industry problem. And if you, companies, try to apply those algorithms on your images, unfortunately, it doesn't work. It is a screenshot of Microsoft um, API for image recognition. It's, um, it's image recognition as a service on the internet. And if you give to um, this uh, API an example of uh, to this software a piece of a car, it is mistaken for a piece of a plane. If you give an image of a terrorist, it is mistaken for a man looking at the ocean. And if you give an image of a group of men, um, it says that they are standing on top of a dirt field, which is actually true, but it is not what really matters for the company here. What matters it is that they are running, they have weapons, and, and they are probably doing an act of war. So when you want to apply all those technologies to your own problems, actually it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And you might think that computer vision is not for your company. It is something that is really impressive, but it is not dedicated to you. And actually, this is not true. I would like to convey the message that AI is really for everybody now. So, for instance, I can, I can show you a few examples of industry-specific problems that have been solved thanks to computer vision. This is um, Sadako Technologies, and Sadako is a company that works in, in waste management, and they have combined plastic detection with robotics to develop um, a waste uh, management system that is really fully operational and automated. And when you see uh, this application, you understand how promising are those technologies when we're thinking about um, all um, cleaning applications. Another one, um, also very interesting, is uh, a, a startup called Regained. And this startup is able to, um, to qualify the, the interest and the beauty of an image, and they will select um, the best pictures among the thousands of pictures people produce during their, their vacation. They will select the best picture, and they will automatically make an, a photo album that anyone can print. And if we go back to the image of, of uh, the military men, it's actually totally possible with today's technologies to develop um, weapon detection for movies and pictures. And, and if you add this information, immediately there are concrete possibilities for the industries of um, military or intelligence. And those three applications have been developed by small companies with small budget. And if you follow the right methodology, anyone can manage to solve an image, um, most of the image-related problems. So here is a recipe that can help you to solve your problems. What do you need if you want to tackle image recognition, um, an image recognition challenge that is specific to your industry? First, you need to take a deep learning framework. Luckily, they are open sourced, they are available, and if you have one good engineer, he, he or she will be able to, um, to use that framework to solve the problem. The second ingredient you need is annotated images. Here, 
all the annotated images differs from one use case or one problem to another one. You really need to develop your own data set of images. And third, you need annotators, human in the loop of learning. How can you assemble the three? Basically, it's, it's, it's um, quite a simple th uh, cycle. You have um, trained an algorithm thanks to your data set and thanks to your framework. And the first algorithm is never perfect, which means that your algorithm will not, um, will not give an answer on 100% of the new image that you provide. For some of the images, you need humans to complete the task and keep annotating uh, images by the way. So if you, if you combine the power of uh, AI plus a team of annotators that complete the job, you have a complete task and you increase the size of the data set. And by this way, you will increase, um, you, will, you will make a better algorithm and you will need less humans to complete the job. So actually, it might seem simple. But here, the difficult part is to make a good data set. For furniture detection, um, for instance, if you want to develop an algorithm that is able to detect furniture in one image, um, you, need to, you need to draw a box around, around each, each furniture, and you should not miss a single furniture. All the box should be perfectly aligned with the object. Consequently, you do it manually at the beginning, and it takes approximately 10 minutes for one image. One image, sorry. I don't know if you remember Sadako Technology, uh, the, the guy who sorted waste, but they had to do the same thing on plastic bottle. And they had to take care of more than one million images to make their data set. Other type of images are even more complicated. If you want to develop um, the algorithm for robotics, like delivery drones, self-driving car, cleaning robots in your home, they need to understand their entire environment. So you need to do a sec an annotation of images manually, and you, knew it, you need to do it for each pixel. And this task is even more complicated and takes one hour. So we understand with those examples that when you want to solve uh, image-related challenge, the real bottleneck is now creating the data set. And we really need, in computer vision, we really need to make bigger and more qualitative data set to speed up the pace of artificial intelligence progress. So, if you want to make your data set, if you need to make them, because you need, um, you have today two solutions. You have more, actually, <clears throat> this is what usually companies do. They either do it internally and they ask to do it to their um, data scientist. Actually, it's possible that they want to quit their job if you ask them to perform the task. Or you can use Amazon Mechanical Turk, for instance, to crowdsource the production of data set. But if you do so, you still have to code the annotation software, you still have to design the quality review of the process, and, and finally, it's quite time consuming, and most of the time, you end, you end with a poor quality of um, the data set. So, there is a real need for, um, for industrial, industrializing the data set Annotation, annotation process. And it is the true solution for solving each company um, computer vision related problem. Here are a few elements that might help to democratize the data set production. The first one is we need to have a software that is dedicated 
to image dataset production, a kind of Photoshop for dataset production. With the right annotator experience, with the right design, you can, you can multiply the productivity a lot. It's, it's crazy to think that today, each data scientist, each computer vision laboratory, or each company is developing its own small software. The second, the second um, element that might really increase the pace of, of uh, AI production is to work on active learning. When you develop a self-driving car, what you really don't want to do is to annotate one million images that you have produced with your camera and your car to develop your AI. Active learning is the science that helps you to select the most informative image, the most various image, to be able to build an artificial intelligence with as many, as, as few images as possible. And another element is to include in your software some machine learning. Um, because it's a very repetitive process, if the software for annotation knows what you are doing, it can really improve the, the, re, the, the um, how easy is the task. And we will go back to this, uh, to this point. So what we intend to do is really to reduce the time to produce the most difficult kind of image, um, image data from 70 to 5 minutes, increasing the productivity of dataset production by 10 times. So here is a little video that, can, that shows how, uh, how artificial intelligence and how machine learning can help the software for, um, for labeling, for annotating uh, images. So if you know that you are, um, you are making box around, around head, because you have done the task many, many, many times, the software knows what you are looking for. And when you square the box around the head, the software will automatically adjust the box exactly to the edge of uh, the head. This, this is something that can save a lot of time when you are doing data set. And it works when we are, it, it also works when we are performing pixel-wise annotation of posters, man, um, persons, or, or road signs. So to conclude, I would, I would really like to convey this message. It is that AI is for everyone because algorithm and computing power are becoming a commodities. So bottleneck now, the real bottleneck of AI production is creating the good data set. And hopefully, if we, if we also democratize those uh, production process, we will be able to see during the next edition of Hello Tomorrow uh, much more incredible applications. Thank you very much.